Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are back on Earth today, and uh, out on the launch pad with our uh, disposal unit that is bound for the moon. Uh, this is uh, the crane truck thing that we built during uh, some of the live streams to uh, get rid of the ruined power couple module that we damaged uh, landing the last uh, resupply, and uh, get rid of it and get all of that uh, stuff cleaned up and clear for the next crew to arrive, which will be going out shortly after this uh, on a test run of our new uh, updated uh, six crew uh, carrier thing. We need a name for that one, but we'll get to that when we fly it. Anyway, uh, SAS is on relative inclination. It's down about 0.33. Uh, doggos are protesting this launch, obviously. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and get going. I'm probably going to speed through a lot of this launch and just get us to the interesting bits, so uh, bear with me, and away we go. Ignition sequence start. All four engines showing a good light. Let them spool. There we go. Clamps off. In a good steady lift from the pad, we are going up on a uh, DN2BX. We actually do have the HG3 upper stage. Um, I'm now having doubts about that. It only has two ignitions, and I don't think we have a real capture stage. Well, this might get interesting. Anyway, uh, I'll see all of you in orbit. When I built this initially, I guess I thought that we would have enough on the core stage alone to hit orbit. Although, it seems a little silly. Also, the spacecraft was rotated on the launch pad, so I started my initial gravity roll towards the north. That was uh, unexpected, but we did find the 90 vector and uh, start to dial it in and uh, get on a more appropriate gravity turn, although it could have been uh, a lot more efficient. Although I don't think that there is any piloting on Earth that was going to get this to orbit on the core stage, but uh, I think I did end up adding another fuel tank to the lander itself to try to uses a uh, orbital capture stage tank or I think it I think when we built it it had well over four kilometers per second so that would be enough to capture into the lunar orbit and uh, get itself onto the surface with a little bit to spare but uh, it's been quite a while since I built this thing so honestly my memory is just a little foggy uh, there was booster set for a while now I'm jumping into some time acceleration so we can build some altitude uh, on a low TWR uh, core stage as we shoot well past the 100 kilometer mark where I should have jettisoned those fairings only to reveal another set of fairings. So any of you who have uh, watched the build a sode Twitch recap know what's kind of going on for, with this. I'll get into the rest of it a, a little bit later, but a lot of above angling, which is why I'm very certain we're not making it to orbit on this core stage. And if at any point I thought that was a thing, well then, that old me probably uh, needs to get slapped a little bit. Uh, I also should have been paying attention to our relative inclination just a little bit more. We'll uh, make some tiny corrections to it here, but really anything uh, below 0.35 or so is easily accountable for um, at any point along this journey, really. Since we're trying to land on a particular spot in the surface, being off by as much as a degree would just put us in a polar orbit, we could still hit our target. It's just a matter of how long you have to wait before you can uh, attempt that landing, but with something with no life support, there's really there's no hurry. Even anything we do send with life support, the margins on it are fairly wide, so I don't think it matters uh, really all that much. Anyway, finally able to uh, point down the horizon with this gravity turn now. Our thrust to weight ratio is up high enough to make this a thing. Also our current speed, but we are coming up on core stage flameout. There's our separation and a good light on the HG3 on our B upper stage. And uh, this will do a good bit of rounding us out into our orbit. Um, I guess we needed a little bit more than a kilometer per second or so off this little guy. Anyway, it'll have more than enough to uh, transfer us to the moon, probably with uh, enough in there to spare. Kind of a shame. Had we had a third ignition on this engine, we totally could have used it for orbital insertion. Anyway, here's uh, old me to uh, round out this burn. 
All right, 268 by 154. Um, of course, they didn't park the whole time I was doing that. The minute I unmute the microphone, crazy town. So we'll go ahead and get our node plotted for uh, lunar insertion. Drag that out. Yeah, a bit too much. Anyway, focus view on the moon and then uh, dial this in just a bit. And of course, can't decide if we're going to actually get there or not. Yeah, let's see, uh, 3.1 kilometers per second needed, 4.8 in the tank. Uh, we'll extend these panels. We do need to uh, keep some kind of electric charge here. A couple of cores running. We'll also uh, activate our radiators. So I guess I had planned on using this for lunar in, uh, orbit insertion, just based on the fact that we have radiators down there for keeping our fuel cold. Anyway, uh, Ullage in the HG3, there's its final ignition, get ourselves pointed along the node, and I should have done this before lighting the engine, but we're going to go ahead and uh, get rid of these uh, strut supports that are holding the uh, clamshell fairing uh, from shaking itself to oblivion during liftoff. We don't really need it anymore, our thrust to weight ratio is pretty reasonable, but uh, just to keep those things from smashing through solar panels, we'll retract them first and then uh, redeploy. And a nice long burn with our HG3. About a minute or so left to go on this. We'll give it a throttle back just for accuracy's sake. A little touchy on the controls and switch out to map view and see if we can't just uh, get our shutdown exactly right. Last 300 meters per second comes at you pretty quick. Yep, overshot uh, by quite a bit. So we'll just uh, rely on the uh, RCS, but since we don't have an ignition for our liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen, we might as well just go ahead and dump it. It's dead weight, but the thrusters attached to this stage might do us some kind of good, at least for making this correction. And it'd be uh, a lot more efficient if they didn't have to haul all of this extra liquid fuel around. So it does take a long time to vent so much liquid hydrogen. It will not take nearly as long to uh, vent the liquid oxygen, but man, I'm glad I sped this up because this did take a very, very, very long time, surprisingly enough. There we go. Liquid oxygen, dump, dump. Then watch that center of mass just shift. This is where the real mass is. That uh, liquid oxygen is very heavy compared to the very not dense liquid hydrogen. And there we go. All that fuel emptied. Now we'll just uh, lay on the RCS a little bit and get this encounter back to what it should have been before we completely overshot the mark. And we'll go ahead and put it on a collision course so we can dispose of this B upper stage. All right. Go ahead and unlock the radiators. I think we could actually use that fuel to slow ourselves down a little bit. It would help with our orbital insertion. Double check here, and looks like we, I took some sounding rocket contracts because there's nothing else that would generate any money during this. We're gonna angle ourselves in to the sun, get those panels up and charging, and then onto the part where I realize that we have forgotten something. All right, just that turn made us uh, not be on a very good course, but we forgot to put comms on this thing, like the whole thing. There's just, there's no comms on it. So we're going to have to wait till we get in range uh, of anything else on the moon before we can make this maneuver that I thought would be a relatively easy one, but we are on just a dead impact trajectory right now. So once we do establish contact and we can rearm RCS, we'll go ahead and just burn through those thrusters. Yeah, not quite out of the woods yet, but at least we're going to dispose of that B upper stage. All right, so let's go ahead and get rid of this. RCS is still on, SAS is still on. Let's uh, open up at least a uh, two of these tanks 
get ourselves pointed back at the node, we should probably activate our engines. Come on. Come on. Knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. God, such a waste of fuel. This may have been very poorly planned. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Good enough. Let's see what we got to do to hit orbit. Eight forty-one. Yeah, that brings us in pretty low, but we can do that. Not a problem. All right, and that is in four hours. How's our battery? We are charging, perfect. Let's bring them home. Very nice view, time warping there on into the moon. And uh, we are going to come in uh, a little danger close, but uh, Oberth effect makes it entirely worthwhile, right? Sure. Anyway, there is our uh, ignition on our four Asterisk two engines and the first evidence of a fairly severe balancing issue. There is orbital insertion, and uh, it is becoming more and more of a struggle to keep this thing actually pointed on the node. I'm trying to bring that uh, apoapsis down as much as humanly possible, but uh, keeping the periapsis high enough is becoming a, a little bit of a struggle. As you can see there, yeah, it's uh, dropped to about 11 kilometers, which is treacherous territory uh, that is low enough to impact surface features. A very nice view there of uh, Earthrise and it's making me a little nervous so point it straight up at the sky and then fire those engines and yeah here's the hazardish kind of approach here. Keep an eye on that altitude true. Yeah those hills do not make me feel good about life coming within about 1.6 kilometers. But we cleared it, we're on our way back up now, so we are free of uh, any terrain features. And uh, there's our installation. We'll just uh, warp on out to our apoapsis. And uh, make a circularization burn. And then it's just going to be a bunch of waiting until we can uh, get in position to make our landing approach. We've uh, brought our apoapsis up high enough, and uh, now we're just going to skip a whole bunch of orbits and uh, try to get the installation underneath us on the daylight side, quite preferably. So yeah, this is taking a long time, so I'm actually going to switch over to the uh, moon base and do the time warp from there, but well, I'll leave that to old me. Okay, I just, I switched to the lunar base to kill time while it was uh, lining up with our supply module and the, the power couple is gone. There's a rover. So yeah, this and I think the did it shift? Is it on top of? Yeah, because that's where the connector port was. There was no one here to connect that. It looks like most of our connector ports have been decoupled. And then, yeah, here's the research station. There's the rover. And here's this drop pod, not connected. No power couple. Well, that makes me really sad. Of all the things to randomly delete KSP. Dang. So this... Uh, we're still going to fly the mission. 
don't you worry. <laughs> uh, we're just dumb. Yeah, I'm I'm a little lost as to why it would delete that, but okay. It does have that special way of making you feel completely invalid in everything that you've done. But uh, we're going to let our orbital track get uh, very close to just above the station. It looks like one or two more passes might do it. And then uh, we will jump back to our uh, disposal unit and get this show on the road. Yeah, there was our transfer. I actually did switch back to it, although I forgot to start the camera rolling again. Uh, I've unlocked the remainder of the fuel tanks, giving us about three kilometers per second or so. And uh, we are currently making our burn to uh, lower our path So on landing approach. If you watch that nav ball there, we are swinging around quite wildly. Um, it does not like staying pointed at the node. We obviously have a weight imbalance issue that is becoming more and more troublesome to deal with. But I think I've got our approach figured out, or at least the node plotted for it anyway, but uh, I will turn you over to old me for live commentary on that. Oh God, this thing is horrible. Come on. Don't overcorrect. Do not overcorrect. On, what are you doing? I think we're off balance. No eyes on target. Of course not. We're way far off still, but. Uh, these dumb little lines are so hard to see. We'll be over the target apparently in 3 minutes 50 seconds. Alright, well, fingers crossed. It's going to be tight. Come on. Get back on the node. At least we have comms. It's at this point that I really regret not doing more exo-atmospheric testing with this craft before dispatching it all the way out to the moon. Um, we definitely could have benefited by uh, doing some burn tests and stuff like that in low Earth orbit, but, you know, here we are. And uh, the struggle is very, very real. This thing uh, is not balanced very well, and I think it's mainly a lot of the robotics uh, inside the clamshell there that are causing this uh, huge disparity that keeps throwing us uh, way off from the node. As you can see there, I just shut down the engines. I'm just doing a quick uh, fuel check to see uh, if all the tanks are in fact at even levels. They are, so I fire the engines back up. And we see the same pivot. It's always to one direction, which is good, which means it's uh, at least a predictable problem and definitely a weight balance issue and not a uh, fuel plumbing issue. And uh, in my attempts to be done uh, struggling with it, I localized all the fuel into just two fuel tanks across from one another. Which uh, actually exacerbated the problem greatly. This made things uh, a little bit more difficult. Uh, I thought it would make things easy. It did not. But uh, we're still kind of on point for our node. Surprisingly enough, we've had enough of a struggle with this thing uh, that hasn't thrown us too far off course, but I will uh, replot uh, a new node for our final braking slash descent burn and uh, try to struggle with it, even though that we are massively, massively off balance. But uh, also a lot of this is me just trying to burn straight up to uh, make sure that we are actually still uh, coming in over the target as opposed to uh, down too shallow. But the the weight balance issue is really, really messing with me. So that's the final uh, burn plot for the uh, rendezvous burn. But now I'm going to take matters 
into my own hands and just uh, move some fuel into the offset side and lock it, which uh, does, of course, reduce our available delta V, but it looks to have solved the balance issue, at least in that small test fire. And uh, you can see now we're coming down on top of Harmonia Station, the little reticles just there to the left of uh, our disposal unit pod. Now bringing up a distance indicator. Uh, I still think we're coming in a little too shallow, but the graph is a lot easier to control now that we've got uh, the weight balanced to a much more uh, tolerable level. It's not perfect, but it is a whole lot better. And uh, our control authority is uh, so much better now. Uh, it was really a huge breath of fresh air trying to fly this thing now that the uh, weight balance at least mostly has been corrected which is fantastic on the i'm just going to guess by moving some fuel around and uh see if that helps and sure enough it worked so now we're just trying to buy some time in the air to get us uh, over the target as well as uh, adjust our angle of descent i would like to zero out everything when we are directly above the target Although we don't have to be near as uh, on point with this landing as we do with something like a supply module that needs to actually be connected to the base. Uh, we can come down really anywhere within even a couple of clicks and still be able to fulfill our mission duties here. And now we're just going to zero out our relative velocity and try to get that retrograde vector uh, somewhere close to down on top of the base. Just so now we'll burn straight retrograde. Yep, just a little bit off, which we can correct just by pulsing the engines. I actually think this is a lot easier than doing it with uh, throttleable engines. At least because uh, these asterisks are not recognized by test flight, so I can just beat the hell out of them and they don't care. There's our render range stutter and uh, the official massive plummet in frame rate, as we have a very high part count for this installation. Uh, even more so now with all these infernal robotics parts that we're bringing in. So slowly but surely we'll just uh, bide our time coming in. Still got 22 seconds of runtime uh, on these Astris engines. So landing really shouldn't be a problem. We say that now, of course, but it's never actually the case. The frame rate was actually a whole lot worse than what you're seeing here, which made landing this thing a little problematic. Um, I don't know, I guess I should be used to it by now. And here we are coming in for our final touchdown, trying to just bleed off a little bit of speed, but I'll turn you over to old me for updates on that. Oh, come on! Those are some... I guess we're grinding on the engine bells. Okay, well... We landed. Let's turn the RCS off before it drives me crazy. Thank you. We'll just uh, lock the rest of these fuel tanks and hope that this whole thing can just settle in. We've made it. Even though our uh, target is uh, not here, okay, you're gonna you're gonna settle in at whatever frame rate you've decided is acceptable. No, nope, you're already locked. You need to lock. Wow, this gets more and more interesting by the second. You locked? Yep, yeah, you're locked. All right. <sighs> Let's uh, get rid of the supports. Fantastic. Let's get our uh, platform arm extended and get this rover uh, detached. Or something. Oh crap, we still have a. Uh, one of our struts is still in place. 
Uh oh. How did I miss one? I thought I got all four. Decouple. Come on. There we go. Now we should be cleared to move. Okay. What are you doing, son? Mm-hmm. This will work really well. <laughs> oh, man. This was a terrible, terrible idea. Yeah, I guess we really didn't need those hinges, considering we were just going to tip the whole thing down anyway. But uh, let's at least pretend like we're going to do this the right way. Still careening towards the installation. That's fine. Everything's fine. All right, let's get this detached. Maybe then the whole thing will start behaving a little bit more normally. Brakes. Oh, did we? We broke two wheels. What are we paying attention to if not? There we go. Brakes. We smashed two wheels, apparently, and all that fumbling around. Are your brakes... Not a thing? Control from here. I mean, we still got four good wheels, so we should be fine. Should be fine. All right. Was there any debris? Not that it's going to highlight for us. Fine. Well, this is where we would have been going to uh, pick up the disposal of the power couple that seems to have been uh, very nicely, randomly deleted. And uh, disposing of it. Good. Brakes are on and locked. That's all we needed for this, really. I mean, it's one last check. Make sure it's not, like, subterranean. It won't even really let me look. But, uh, yeah. And this then the, this would have gone back and uh, loaded it into the vessel it came in, which I'm sure we'll get to eventually. Yeah, here we go. Which then would have uh, folded itself up and took back off for self-disposal. Uh, I guess we can do that now. There's no real point in keeping this thing around just to uh, further destroy our frame rate here at the installation. So we will just uh, take a very slow and painstaking method of uh, collapsing this platform back into the fairing in which it came. And I... Uh, get it ready for takeoff once we uh, figure out all the right buttons to press there we go almost folded in all the way that is pretty much centered and then fold up the clamshell and it is now uh, back in launch configuration so we can go ahead and open up the fuel tanks uh, including our ballast tank that we will just uh, pump back into the other two I know it's going to throw off our weight balance, but it doesn't really matter. This thing is just going to uh, try to fly high enough to destroy itself. There's ignition and liftoff. And there's our weight balance problem. We'll just uh, let that correct a little bit. 
and then uh, pulse the engines as we can. We basically just want to get enough altitude to uh, get an assured destruction out of at least most of the parts at a uh, destination far enough away to uh, not cause problems for the facility. And here's coming up on impact. I guess the original plan was to get it very, very high up and hit the ground very, very hard, but we used a lot of fuel uh, on orbital insertion uh, versus, I guess, the poorest possible way that I could have planned this. Eventually, this thing will explode. There it is. Probably look a lot more uh, awesome if I removed some of that. But there's our core and its landing legs. And it strikes me that that's very interesting. That could be very useful. Uh, it has a large battery, the avionics, the landing legs we could use, most of the other parts smashing into the ground. But uh, I think we're gonna have to come back for this, at least this core part. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.